Hello and welcome to the Midtown Chimney Sweeps Crown Rebuilding Seminar. We're going to show you several video clips and still photos. It's important to understand from the beginning how a crown is to be constructed. It should be about four inches thick, overhang two inches on the sides, and the flue tile should stick up two to six inches out the top. There should be three places where there's a bond break on top of the chimney walls and around the flue tile. An easy way to construct this uh, concrete monstrosity which sticks over the sides of the chimney wall is the Jelco crown forms. Those are available from Copperfield for right around $250. Uh, as is often the case when you come out to do a chimney repair, there's cracked flue tiles, there is defective masonry all over the place. In this case we replace the flue tiles with a stainless steel chimney by installing an anchor plate as you can see here right on top of the smoke chamber. The crown forms sit right on top of the chimney walls as indicated in the pictures here. We put a piece of concrete board down on top, trim it for the pipe, and then backfill with concrete. And here we have Nigel removing the Jelco crown forms off this chimney. Let's take a look. We've got about a four inch thick chimney crown uh, made with, again, the Jelco crown forms. We're gonna do crown coat as indicated by the presence of the uh, brush on top there. Underneath here, we're inspecting our taped seal. Uh, when we backfill the concrete on the Jelco form and the chimney crown, sometimes that wet material likes to sneak out of there, so we put a little bit of duct tape underneath there. We're gonna come back with a grinder you'll see here in a moment and ease the edge of the top of that crown. Uh, by removing the excess material, we make a smooth surface, even running the blade horizontal uh, and vertical along the edge of the crown to just polish that up as there might be little uh, air pockets where when we tapped on the wet concrete it didn't totally seal it up. It didn't totally shake the mortar down. You can see how smooth this thing looks now as the crown coat has been applied and uh, up underneath here uh, we are applying sealant where the bond break exists uh, right between the crown and the chimney wall. So he's going to run a bead of sealant underneath here and that will help prevent the water from going sideways and then getting underneath the crown and lifting the entire crown. And there you have a beautiful new chimney crown. Here we are going to work on a single story ranch style house in Littleton, Colorado. There is a very defective chimney crown already in place and again you're going to pick up a pattern with these chimneys when you go out for masonry repairs it's never just one thing uh, yes you have a defective crown but there's also going to be a need for tuck pointing there's going to be loose bricks missing mortar in the flue tile joints uh, you're going to notice look there's already two bricks on the roof that have just fallen off with age and time so there's going to be more than just a chimney crown replacement work here we're indicating, uh, Mike is showing us that someone has just layered more concrete, or in this case mortar, over the top of the existing crown. Uh, you may even lose a brick, as you can see here. Just keep going. you got to get down to good material, chip it off, and we'll put the bricks back. Have you ever wondered what's underneath these faux flues? On the extreme left and right, both of those are fake or faux flues. The middle flue is the only functional flue here. Mike's just going to grab the 60 or 80 pound flue tile that's half full of concrete and move it. And what are we going to discover? We're going to be the first people to look down this chimney in 30 years. Looks like they had plywood holding that flue tile up and 30 years worth of spider webs. We'll just toss those back down there. Let's take a look down. Have you ever wondered what's inside of a chimney outside the flue tile? Well, let's take a look here. Mike's uh, indicating there's something wrong. Let's take a look. We look down inside, you can see the top of the smoke chamber. This is a two flue tile scenario, rather short. Whoops, looks like we got a crack in that first flue tile right at the top. And this mortar joint on the top, oh, it's a three flue tile system. On that top flue tile, you can look right through. So again, it's never one thing. When someone has poor maintenance uh, habits, it's not just one thing. We will continue to remove the plywood we like to joke with people, this is non-combustible plywood. But don't, don't actually use that. There's no such thing as non-combustible plywood. So we're going to clean up the top surface of the chimney walls. Again, minimum thickness requirement, four inches on these chimney walls. 
just strike it with the hammer, break it loose, remove this. You'll have to work your way slowly around. Yes, you may break some bricks loose. Um, you may need to re kind of like reposition them and set them in fresh mortar. Um, we're going to show you here in this case our Jelco forms did not work because we had too short of Jelco forms. So we pivoted over and decided we would use 2x4 construction. So you get a chance to see that. In order to do the 2x4 construction, we will need to mount these clips uh, to the outside of the chimney. That's how we chose to do it. And that will support the chimney crown forms. It's also important to note that a clean workspace is very important not only for your safety but for the function of the roof. Uh, if you stand on those chunks of mortar, you could grind them through the roofing material, damaging the roof and uh, causing them a roof leak or an expensive aesthetic problem. We're doing a little bit of tuck pointing on some defective joints, tightening up some things with some mortar. Here you can see our anchors now installed. We just use uh, quarter inch uh, lags with plastic anchors that can be removed when we remove the wood crown forms. We put a piece of half inch concrete board over the top of the chimney walls so that mortar and car so that concrete doesn't fall down inside the big chase. You'll see that in just a moment. Now you can see our wood forms. Uh, you can see our concrete board over the hole. Here we're using plumber's insulation wrap and a bit of duct tape to hold it together. And that will provide a bond break. Uh, it will prevent the concrete that we're about to pour inside this crown form from bonding to that masonry flue tile. And then when that masonry flue tile system heats up or shrinks with heating and cooling of a fire, it will crack. So let's put a bond break on there. That's what's required. In this case, we're gonna put a flue stretcher on top of this flue. We noticed that we're gonna to have to cut this flue down. We wanted to do that today rather than in the future. So we cut a horizontal line and then we cut down each corner. Then we just take a hammer and tap it. So if you ever have to uh, lower a flue tile height, that's a very easy way to do it. Cut a horizontal line and then cut down each corner and then take your hammer and tap from the inside out and the pieces will just neatly fall right off. There will be some jagged edges left behind which you can just dress up with your four inch angle grinder with a diamond blade. Next, you will need to put down your uh, 3 8 or half inch rebar mat so that uh, this crown has proper strength because again, it's going to overhang the chimney walls. It's going to be a weak spot. So you need to put the rebar mat in there. Hold it back about one inch from the inside of the wood forms as you will see here in just a moment as Mike sets this down. Uh, and then in a moment you'll see as we backfill the concrete on top of this, you want to keep it just a little bit short, but keep it as close as possible. When you mix your concrete, not mortar, but concrete, concrete has rocks in it, mortar does not. So when you buy your bags of concrete and you add your water, you can buy a little $13 mixing trough like this and use a garden hoe or a mixing hoe. And uh, you want to get it to a consistency that's wet enough to move and to be workable but not so wet it's sloppy as you can see here kind of the consistency as we shove it around i'm going to show you the corners here as the rebar is pretty close it's about an inch off of each corner uh, not you don't want it to be so long that it hits the wood form if it hits your wood or metal forms then when you strip the form off and you look at it from the outside you'll see this it'll start to develop a rust spot because the rebar will be literally sticking out and visible on the edge of the project. You can see our pink uh, plumber's insulation there. We have a bond break. We got our rebar. We're adding buckets. Uh, you'll want to spray the inside of your chimney crown forms, either metal or wood, with WD-40 or some type of oil release agent so that it will come off in two to three weeks. Here we are installing the uh, flue stretcher on our properly sized uh, flu height. I'm going to tighten that down that way we don't get any birds and rain down there while we're waiting. We need to wait two to three weeks for this to cure and then strip the forms, pull the anchors out, 
uh, and then put that bead of sealant underneath the drip edge of the crown and then we would recommend polishing it up with your four inch diamond grinder and then apply a nice layer of crown coat on this and that will make it last for a good 30 years. Just really preserve that crown. Um, crown coat is great for old crowns that have minor cracks and it's great for brand new crowns to keep them from cracking. Well, thank you so much for joining us for this uh, short training on chimney crowns.